Sources say Army General Lee Yong-gil probably paid the ultimate price for criticising Kim's leadership appointments. I cannot uh, get rid of that kind of uh, nightmare every night. If you ever watch the North Korean army marching, you will notice one thing with all the generals. They all have so many medals on them. However, thinking back about it, they haven't gone to war in more than 60 years. So, how is it that they have all these medals even without going to war for over 60 years? Let's find out. If you have ever noticed, North Korean generals are always seen with so many medals on them. You might even think that this is a walking trophy case. However, the country has not engaged in any sort of warfare for the past six decades. This has brought about so much curiosity and bewilderment as people wonder why they have all these medals. Better yet, how are they awarded these medals? If you were to dig deeper, you would learn that all these awards come from not only military achievements, but also a deeply rooted system of honor. This system has been greatly influenced by historical ties and a unique societal framework. Before we even learn how they have all these medals, let's first get into the history of North Korea's military decorations and how they came to be. All these awards and decorations date back to the era of the Soviet Union. They had a significant impact on North Korea, especially during the early years of its formation. After the Japanese occupied their country, most of the Koreans sought refuge in the Soviet Union. Among these Koreans would be Kim Il-sung, who would end up being the leader of North Korea. While he was here, Kim Il-sung not only found refuge, but he also had the opportunity to engage in military activities. He eventually made it to leading a rifle battalion of the Red Army during World War II. During Kim Il-sung's service there, the Soviet Union had already established a long-lasting tradition of honoring military and civilian achievements with medals and orders. This was a practice that greatly impressed him. Kim Il-sung's experiences in the USSR were life-changing. He received a lot of accolades and recognition for his military services under the Soviet flag, all of which were meaningful to him. It was through this that he came to learn the value of awards, not just for appreciation for a service, but even as a powerful tool of motivation and loyalty. The decoration eventually served as a tangible representation of one's dedication and service to the state. This was something that Kim Il-sung found immensely appealing. It was through this appreciation for the Soviet system of awards that Kim Il-sung shaped North Korea's own honors system. After the end of the Korean War, North Korea set out to establish its own identity and sovereign statehood. This meant developing their own comprehensive award system. This new system would heavily draw its inspiration from the Soviet model. With time, North Korea crafted its own series of medals and orders. However, instead of making them pure military achievements, they made them so that they would honor a wide range of accomplishments. These would range from battlefield achievements to labor, education, and cultural accomplishments. However, don't be mistaken and think that this system was being developed to be exactly like that of the Soviet Union. It just adapted its principles and tweaked them to fit the unique context of North Korea. Those in leadership recognized the potential of awards in helping them build a cohesive and motivated society. They ensured that each citizen, soldier, and official felt directly connected to the national narrative through personal achievement and recognition. Furthermore, these awards also served a critical role in consolidating Kim Il-sung's power which would eventually align personal success with loyalty to his leadership and the state. Years after the Korean War was over, North Korea's award system became more elaborate with a burgeoning variety of medals. Now there were medals to cover various sectors of achievements, ranging from military bravery and heroism to other contributions to science, industry, and culture. This just shows the broadened scope of what the nation considered a valuable service. However, this is just the history of how the many medals came to be. But it still doesn't explain how the generals in this country have many medals without going to war for more than 60 years. So, stay tuned to find out how this is possible. We have already seen that Kim Il-sung 
having gotten motivation and the idea of awards from the Soviet Union, implemented a vast range of services that would earn you a medal. But what is the role of the military and labor achievements in awarding medals? Over the years, the lines between military achievements and civilian contributions have become uniquely blurred in North Korea. This has created a societal structure where medals and awards are considered universal symbols of honor and loyalty. This system greatly reflects upon the country's military-first policy, elevating the armed forces role in governance and everyday life. However, one of the most exciting things about the medals and awards is that it is not just for the soldiers on the front line, or even those with the military prowess. In fact, in an intriguing blend of valor and productivity, medals in North Korea consist of a wide array of achievements, ranging from exemplary military service to massive contributions in other sectors, such as labor and civilians. North Korea's societal framework has been sincerely made to be like the military, with the military having a great influence on some of the aspects of civilian life. This simply means that the whole idea of military ethos is not just about being ready for combat or defense. It is also an excellent pivot for national unity and collective identity. The government emphasizes militarization to instill discipline, patriotism, and a great sense of duty towards nation building. As a result, the award system also plays a crucial role in ensuring that these values are recognized and that contributions that align with the state's goals and ideology are rewarding. Eventually, the military first policy gave North Korea a unique cultural landscape where achievements, no matter what they are, are celebrated through the prism of national service and loyalty. This approach has blurred the traditional distinctions between military and civilian honors, creating a comprehensive system that appreciates and recognizes a wide array of contributions to the state. There is a major twist to North Korea's medals, going against everything we know. These medals are not just reserved for acts of military bravery, as it is with most countries. Instead, most of the decorations celebrate accomplishments in areas that may not even be related to anything to do with the martial realm. A great example of this is the medal awarded for being great at fishing. This is a critical activity that supports food security and economic sustainability. Even though these awards seem pretty mundane, they show the importance of collective effort in achieving national objectives. With that, everyday tasks are elevated to acts of patriotism. In addition, contributions to infrastructure development, such as constructing power plants and dams or advancements in agriculture, are recognized and honored. These are all projects that are crucial for the country to keep sustaining itself, as well as advancing in development. And with that, it just reflects the leadership's emphasis on industrial and agricultural progress. By awarding people with such achievements, the state acknowledges individual and collective contributions and motivates the continued dedication to national growth. However, awarding medals, especially for labor and administrative achievements, goes a long way toward recognizing and promoting social cohesion and motivation among the citizens. By doing this, North Koreans are taught that they all have a role to play in the nation's destiny. Furthermore, it goes on to blur the lines between military service and civilian contributions. This comprehensive approach to awards brings out a broader strategy of governance, where the state's military-centric values are instilled across all sectors of society. This whole system has some interesting aspects to it. And one of the most fascinating ones is the inclusion of medals for what is basically an ordinary activity. This includes something like agriculture or mining. These honors just show how much the state is committed to recognizing all sorts of contributions. A great example is when the medals are bestowed for excellence in coal mining or crop cultivation activities. These are all crucial for the nation's energy security and food sovereignty. By doing this, the state elevates these tasks from ordinary matters to matters of national importance. They are also given the same respect and honor as traditional military achievements. It is clear that these awards go a long way in motivating people in the development of North Korea, with everyone wanting to do something to earn some recognition. But what about when it comes to the generals? Keep watching to discover how the generals have all the other medals and what other aspects are awarded. There is a great culture of mass awards in North Korea, which has been there for a while now. This is a culture that goes beyond mere tradition. 
It has been deeply rooted in both the psychological fabric of its society and its governance structure. This entire practice of generously bestowing medals is not only a reflection of the country's military and labor achievements, but also serves other broader social and psychological purposes. Giving these medals fosters a unique national identity and unity, all while differentiating North Korea's military traditions from those of other nations. When you take a deeper look into the heart of North Korea's extensive award system, you will learn that there is a complex web of psychological motivations. First and foremost, these medals serve as a tangible symbol of the state's recognition and appreciation. This is important in a society where individual achievements are often called collective goals. This recognition also helps to fulfill a basic human desire for acknowledgement and esteem, which in turn reinforces individuals and motivates them to do more. The other part of the complex web is when it comes to the commitment to state objectives. Just as we have seen a couple minutes ago, the abundance of medals goes a long way in ensuring social cohesion. Through the entire process of creating a visible hierarchy of achievement that goes beyond military and civilian sectors, the state ends up fostering a sense of belonging and identity among its citizens. In addition, this hierarchical structure also ends up promoting a competitive spirit among the citizens. This leads to everyone contributing vigorously to national development, as they hope to also receive recognition. This culture also plays a huge role in promoting ideological indoctrination. With each medal tied to specific achievements that align with the state objectives and values, each citizen is constantly reminded of the ideological purity expected of them. Therefore, as a result of this, the rewards become a means of controlling and directing societal norms and behaviors, ensuring that every action contributes to the perpetuation of the state's ideology. It goes without saying that if you compare most of the military traditions in other countries to those of North Korea, North Korea's approach to award stands out because of its volume and variety. When it comes to most countries, military decorations are reserved for acts of valor, bravery, and exceptional service, especially in combat situations. These awards are rarely given, making them coveted symbols of honor and sacrifice. Even when those who have earned them wear them, they feel proud of having such an achievement. A great example to look at and compare this is the United States and other European countries. They all have a structured system of military honors that distinguish between different levels of achievement. And it goes without saying that with this, the highest decorations are very rare and often posthumously awarded. Contrary to this norm, North Korea's award system emphasizes someone's military prowess and their achievements in labor, education, and other civilian areas. This is a unique broad spectrum of recognition, one that reflects the country's militarized society. And because of this, the distinction between civilian and military contributions is less pronounced. Furthermore, unlike in most countries where military and civilian honors are greatly distinguished and can be differentiated, North Korea's approach somehow considers them all as one, underscoring the holistic contribution to national development. On the other hand, the mass awarding of medals in North Korea serves a different societal function than in other countries. For other countries, medals are mainly given to highlight individual heroism or exceptional contributions. But when it comes to North Korea, they are also given with the aim of unifying the populace under one common goal and ideology. This goes a long way toward reflecting a distinct cultural perspective on the role of the individual versus the collective, where personal achievements are celebrated as contributions to the collective strength and prosperity of the nation. There is another aspect of the whole North Korean award system that just keeps getting interesting. This is the intergenerational aspect. This simply means that most of the honors can be passed down or shared within families. This is a relatively unique aspect, one that has never been heard of in any other country. By doing this, the state not only reinforces the importance of family legacy in state service, but also binds multiple generations to the state's ideology and objectives. And with this, it creates a continuous line of loyalty and service to the nation. But how does that even work? Well, that brings us to what is known as the rules of three generations. But what is this? When it comes to North Korea's system of awards, 
which we have already established is deeply rooted in both military and civilian achievements. It is also influenced by a unique and controversial policy known as the Rules of Three Generations. This policy plays a huge role in governing both the distribution of honors and the implementation of punitive measures. It is highly symbolic of the nation's approach to governance, loyalty, and social control. When you understand this whole policy, you will have a better insight into the complex interplay between honor, punishment, and legacy in North Korean society. However, this is a policy that seems very strange to say the least, and it is unheard of outside of North Korea. According to the rules of three generations, any action that an individual does can affect their family across three generations. This means that an individual's actions can also be passed on to their parents, children, and grandchildren. This policy has some historical roots, though it also has some confusing elements as well. One of the values that it emphasizes is the loyalty and collective responsibility among family. However, as much as it sounds like a good thing, North Korea has used it in a completely different way. They have adapted it into a tool that is used to reward both loyalty and enforce discipline among its population. Historically, the policy was mainly instituted as a way to make sure that there is absolute loyalty to the regime and deterring acts of dissent or defection. By holding the family unit collectively responsible for the actions of its members, the policy mainly aims to create a self-policing society where familial bonds end up enforcing state ideology and compliance. This approach mainly takes advantage of the deeply rooted familial loyalties and the feat of collective punishment to maintain order and allegiance to the state. The rules of three generations policy can be said to have some sort of dual nature. It affects North Koreans in both positive and negative ways. But how is that? On the one hand, it allows for the recognition of achievements and the bestowing of honors to extend beyond the individual. This goes on to celebrate the family's collective contribution to the state. This aspect of the policy goes on to reinforce the importance of family legacy, especially in state service. This also encourages generations of loyalty and dedication to the nation's goals. For the families of decorated heroes, they not only get to enjoy societal prestige, but also tangible benefits such as better living conditions, education, and employment opportunities. On the other hand, the policy has a strong negative effect on families, making their punitive measures quite stark. For example, if an individual were to be found guilty of a crime against the state, the consequences would not only be dealt to them but also to the entire family, and not only to their immediate family, but for three generations. This can be in the form of imprisonment, forced labor, or other severe penalties. These are not only for the individual who was found guilty, but also for the parents, children, and grandchildren. With this collective punishment, it deters dissent by exploiting the natural human instinct to protect one's family from harm. When it comes to awarding of medals and honors with regards to this policy, the impact is quite great. However, as much as celebrating achievements with your family is great, it also means that even failures are not theirs alone. They are felt through an entire lineage. This shared responsibility for one's actions creates a powerful incentive for conformity and loyalty. In addition, it also gives a profound sense of vulnerability. Now imagine knowing that any action you do may affect your entire family for generations, either in a positive or a negative way. This not only influences the personal behavior of a person, but even the collective psyche of the nation. In addition to all this, this policy has shaped the social fabric of North Korean society, which has brought about a caste-like system where one's family background can determine their fate. This means that if you are in a lineage that is known for loyalty and service to the state, that lineage is likely to receive even more prestigious awards and honors, perpetuating a cycle of privilege. On the other hand, if a family is known for being disloyal and defiant, they face not only social stigma, but also systemic barriers to receiving any sort of state recognition or advancement. When you look at where North Korea has been, it has definitely had some very strange rules compared to the rest of the world. However, as the world has evolved, so has North Korea. But that is just to some point. So when you consider modern-day North Korea, is it a continuation or evolution of the tradition? 
Let's look at the facts and find out. In contemporary North Korea, the tradition of awarding military and civilian decorations has continued to be a significant aspect of the state's cultural and political landscape. However, most of the laws were instilled under the leadership of Kim Il-sung. However, under the leadership of Kim Jong-un, there have been some nuances in the application and significance of these awards. This reflects on both the continuation of established practices and potential shifts in the state's approach to honor and recognition. If you were to take a deeper look into the current practices in awarding military decorations and the potential changes that are there under Kim Jong-un's leadership, you would have some more insight into the evolving dynamics of North Korean society and governance. This entire practice of awarding military and civilian decorations in North Korea is still very robust. The medals still serve as a key mechanism for recognizing loyalty, achievement, and dedication to the state's ideals. To date, the criteria for receiving these honors still consist of a very wide range of contributions, ranging from military prowess and heroism to achievements in labor, science, and culture. With such a wide spectrum of recognition, it continues to emphasize the state's comprehensive view of service and contribution to national development. When it comes to the military decorations in particular, they are awarded through a great ceremony, and they are highly publicized events. They have been set like this to underscore the importance of the military in North Korean society. Furthermore, these events are not just aimed at recognizing individual or unit achievements. They are also used for state propaganda, which goes on to reinforce the narrative of a strong, resilient, and heroic nation. When it comes to the high-profile awards, they are bestowed mainly by Kim Jong-un personally. This goes on to emphasize the connection between the military and the leadership and reinforces the leader's role as the ultimate source of honor and authority. Ever since he took power of the entire state, Kim Jong-un has shown keen awareness of the symbolic power of medals and awards. As much as there is continuity with past practices, which is very evident, there are signs of potential evolution in how these honors are used and what they signify. One of the areas in which we can see potential change is the increased emphasis on technological and scientific achievements. This is in a bid for North Korea seeking advancements in its technological capabilities. Most of their focus seems to be in fields such as nuclear development and information technology. In these two fields, there has been a significant increase in its awards, recognizing even more contributions in these areas. This focus on these areas reflects a broader strategic priority of the regime to take North Korea as a modern, technologically advanced state. Furthermore, Kim Jong-un seems to have put some focus on youth and innovation, and the effects of this have been felt by the state. Now, young scientists, engineers, and workers seem to be the most recipients of the high honors. This hints at an attempt to cultivate a new generation of loyal, motivated, and skilled individuals, most of whom will contribute to the state's development goals. Furthermore, this focus on youth has also served as a way to rejuvenate the state's image and ensure the continuity of the regime's values, especially among the younger generation. Another aspect that North Korea seems to be evolving is regarding the role of international engagement and diplomacy in the awarding of decorations. It is not news that North Korea has complex relationships with both its allies and adversaries. However, even with these complex relationships, there have been some instances where awards are used to signify diplomatic achievements. Not only that, but there are also those that are used to honor foreign individuals who contribute to the state's international goals. By using these decorations as a tool of diplomacy, it shows that North Korea has a great understanding of the power of awards in international relations. On the other hand, it is important to note that any changes in the practice of awarding decorations in North Korea are incremental and deeply rooted in the state's overarching goals. This is just a way for the state to maintain control, ensure loyalty, and project strength. Even with all that evolution into a more modern state, there are things that will remain unchanged even as time goes by. These are the award system, the recognition of service to the state, 
the intertwining of military and civilian achievements, and the promotion of a unified national identity. As much as there are a lot of things that we don't know about when it comes to North Korea, there are those that really impact international perception. There are things that North Korea does intentionally, just so that the world can see them a certain way. But what are these? Even though the state is nothing but mysterious and very controversial to other nations' norms and practices, North Korea uses its system of awards and honors as a tool for shaping international perceptions. By using state media to highlight its achievements, especially those related to military advancements and technological progress, North Korea aims to show the world that they are strong, resilient, and self-reliant. Therefore, by distributing their awards among scientists and military personnel for advancements in nuclear technology or satellite launches, they are all to pass a message to the international community, emphasizing their abilities and its status as a formidable player on the world stage. In addition, this strategic use of awards not only aims to command respect and deterrence, but also seeks to fight the narrative of North Korea being an isolated and backward country. All the carefully orchestrated ceremonies and media coverage regime keeps aiming at showcasing a narrative of progress and success, appealing to a sense of national pride and legitimacy, especially in the eyes of the global audience. When you consider this award system internally and in this modern world, it is a critical component of North Korea's propaganda machinery, which is designed to reinforce loyalty to the Kim dynasty and the government's ideologies. The whole public celebration of award recipients serves to cultivate a collective identity among North Koreans, which is closely tied to the state's achievements and the leadership's benevolence. This whole system also reinforces the narrative of the government as the protector and benefactor of the nation, ensuring its survival and prosperity in the face of external threats and challenges. On the other hand, just as when the award system was being introduced, it is still used as a mechanism for social control to incentivize certain behaviors and activities that align with the state's goals. By glorifying and recognizing the acts of individuals who contribute significantly to national development and defense, the government sets some standards for citizenship and loyalty. This slowly guides the population towards certain desired norms and values, more so without them knowing it. Therefore, this aspect of the award system is crucial for maintaining order and unity within the highly disciplined society of North Korea. It is clear that North Korea's award system is a crucial element in balancing the regime's international and internal objectives. Externally, it seeks to alter some of the global perceptions and assert its sovereignty and power. As for the internal objectives, it aims to reinforce the government's propaganda promoting a unified national identity that is centered around loyalty to the leadership. It is like a double-edged sword, illustrating the sophisticated use of state honors as tools of both diplomacy and domestic governance. The biggest challenge for this is to ensure that its efforts to project strength and progress to the outside world don't undermine the internal narrative of unity and loyalty. This delicate balance is a great testament to the strategic importance of the award system in North Korea's broader political and social strategy. North Korea has used this strategy in various ways, but mostly to make sure that they keep their citizens loyal to the country and to the state's goals. However, they have made it look as though it is just a regular thing. They have also made it such that the more recognition you receive as an individual, the more privileges you get to enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.